Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go through turning your ebook file into a paperback file. So I have a checklist in that downloadable worksheet for module seven that you can follow along, kind of talking about the essential things that you need to do. If you already know some of the steps, go ahead and fast forward to the steps you don't know. And so I have the ebook file that we we're working on from the previous video. We're going to start with the same file and turn that into a paperback book. So we're going to save it as do, do, do the same name, but now we're just going to add paperback to it. And that way I know that this is my paperback file. And so any changes I make to this one will only affect this one and not my original draft or my ebook file. So the next step that I do is actually go in and I change the layout to the margins that are going to fit the size of book that I chose. Now in the description for this module, I'm going to include a link where you can actually go to the Amazon KDP website and download pre-made templates for the different book sizes that you might want to use. Pretty much all of my books are five by eight. Let me show you that size. So you can see this is a five by eight book. It's a little bit bigger than my hand. This one is I think 180, yeah, about 180 pages. You see it's a pretty good width. I get emails at least once a week about people saying, you know, they read my entire book in one sitting. And I think having a size that's five by eight or six by nine is doable for that because we want people to not feel intimidated by a gigantic old book or if you know your book is 600 pages for whatever reason then maybe picking a bigger size might be good but for the majority of what we're creating and what I walk you through in the course a uh, five by eight or six by nine would be perfect and again you can go to the link in the description that's going to give you templates so you can see what margin sizes they chose and with that when I was first starting out you could even copy and paste your text into their templates and just go from there but everything I'm going to show you turning your ebook into the paperback file is actually very simple and it actually ends up with a much better product. So you have a few different options there. I just want to make sure you're aware you don't have to make the exact same size book that I'm going to show you how to make, but you're going to use all the same steps to make whatever size book you want. So I already wrote down the margins I'm going to need. So I'm just going to show you how I would go about doing that. So I go up in the left corner for the layout tab, then I'm going to head over. I'm going to hit size and I want my paper size to be the size of the book. I know that that's going to be five by eight and then I'm going to hit OK. Right after making that change, you can already see that it starts to look more like a paperback book, like the individual pages and whatnot. So now we're going to go ahead and change the margins. We're going to go to margins. We're going to hit custom margins. And again, all of these settings are going to depend on the size book that you want and they're gonna be available in the templates at the link that I provided. So you won't have to guess about any of this stuff. It's gonna be really simple. Let me just go through 0.76 for top left and bottom. So let me type that in real quick. And then 0.6 for right, the header and footer. Change that to 0.35. Section start is continuous. All right. So I think we are all set. Cool. So that should be that whole step. You change the size of your book, you change the margins of your book. And now when you scroll through, you should see that there's a little bit of offset. So when a page starts on the right, let me zoom in a little bit. So as you flip the book, each page, the left versus right page, needs to be a slightly different size. And so changing the margins ahead of time makes it do that for us so that as we go through and format the rest of the text in the book, it's going to look the way it's supposed to look on every single page. My next step is that I like to go and justify all the body text in my entire book. This just makes the book look very professional. Let me show you what justified means. So you see how, let's see if I can show you there, how it's a nice clean cut on either side, nice straight line. That's what we want our body text to look like inside our book. We don't want it to look like, you know, see this, how it's kind of jagged all along the right edge there. We want to fix that so it looks nice and professional. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and justify all of this text. Now, one thing to note as you go through and do this is when you have things like subtitles or bulleted lists, you don't want to highlight and justify those because that'll mess up the spacing that you designed for that. So usually I just go through and I select it 
paragraph by paragraph or section by section. And again, this can be a little time consuming, a little tedious, but it makes the final product look so good that it's definitely worth doing. Or I can speed this up and I'm just going to go through and make sure all the text in my body of my chapters are all justified and look the way I want them to. So I'm going to go through and do all this. If you're listening to this, just know that I believe in you. I promise you. It takes time and a little bit of effort. But you just have to have a little bit of faith and a little bit of hope. You can do it. After all of my body text in my book is justified, that's when I'm going to go back through and see if I want to change any of the font for my chapters, subtitles, or body text. I usually wait until this stage because now I can get a better idea of what the spacing looks like, what the size looks like, and now I just have a better feel for what my finished product might feel like when it's in book form. And as you know, we already did some of the formatting when it was in ebook version. So all of the chapters and subtitles are already formatted ahead of time. One additional step that I usually do when I'm turning something into an ebook is that I try to center things or space things a little bit more generously. So for example, on the title page for my book, I'm going to turn on the show hide and I might just kick it down a few notches so that it's a little bit more centered on the page. Now with that, the rule that I talked about where you shouldn't have more than four paragraph symbols or enters in a row when you're working on an ebook format that doesn't really apply in paperback because there's no computer trying to read what you're doing you're literally just submitting a pdf file that's going to get printed out the way that it looks right there so feel free to kind of use whatever formatting you want you can be a little bit more generous with spacing and things like that so i'm going to go ahead and scroll down i'm okay with those being that way i think i am going to space my chapters down a little lower. Another trick that I showed before, if you hit control F, that brings up a navigation pane so that you can, you know, find whatever things you're looking for. But along with these, you also get the option to choose headings in this corner. And that way, I know I want to spend some time jumping to each chapter and making them a little bit lower. So now I can do that a little bit quicker than just scrolling. I hit chapter one and I already did that. So I can jump to chapter two pop in a few more spaces, chapter three, do the same thing. And it just saves me a few seconds just by using this method instead of scrolling. And yep, those look good to me. I'll leave those the way they are. So after I do that, the next step I do is completely optional, but I find that it just adds a nice little flair or design to the book is I go to the first letter of every chapter and I use the drop cap function. And so this makes your letters or the front page of your chapter stand out. Let me show you what that looks like. So right there, you can see a very big M to kind of start off the chapter. And it just makes it look nice and professional, makes it look like a well formatted book. And to do this, it's really easy. You just highlight the letter that you want to drop cap. And then there's a long way to go find it. But I usually just go ahead and search drop cap. And you see the option is right here, add a drop cap. And I usually always choose dropped, not in margin, because I want the text to kind of wrap around it. So I just click drop, and there it is. Now it's big, and it's going to show up really nicely when we submit the PDF to Amazon. Now again, with all those things, you can go ahead, pull up the option. You can right-click it, and you're going to have the option to add it to the quick access toolbar, and that means it's going to be up in that corner. So again, if you have 15, 20, 30 chapters, you don't want to go ahead and be searching for this every single time. You just want to make it a little bit shorter. And so that's what I usually do. I just throw it up in that upper left-hand corner. And that way it's really simple to click the button whenever I need it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and jump through the other five chapters and add my drop cap. So again, I'm using that navigation function to move through the text pretty quickly. All right, just a couple more chapters. And last one. I usually only do my normal body text or the content of my book. I usually don't drop cap the rest of the front matter or the back matter. Again, this is just personal preference. So feel free to do whatever works well for you or for how you want your book to feel. The next step that I do is I go through and I make sure all the spacing in my book feels and looks the way I want it to. So again, this can be personal preference, but let me show you what I mean. So you know how when we went through the ebook and I made sure that the paragraphs were at least one or two spaces apart? I'm just going to go ahead and do that again, but now that it's in paperback format, I might add or subtract certain spaces. 
So as I scroll through, for example, on this first chapter page, I can see that this first paragraph seems kind of big. And so if I could break it up in a way that didn't mess up the idea that it was communicating, that's something I would do. So just throwing in two enters or two paragraph marks, you see, just kind of makes it a little bit more readable. So it's not just one giant block of text as soon as someone comes to the first page of my book. I would kind of do things like that as I scroll through. If there's anything that stands out to me, if I want something to stand apart, like a certain sentence or a quote, I just go through and I make sure things feel and look the way I want them to. Usually this includes breaking up big paragraphs, making the subsections stand apart in a big way, or just highlighting and doing random font fixes. As I go through, I'm not going to do too much in this example. Again, it's a lot of personal preference. But I just want to see if any other big things stand out to me. So like this page, there's a lot of small spacing and that might have been on purpose for the ebook version. But maybe for this paperback book, as long as it makes sense and it's a complete thought, then I would bring them together and make them more cohesive as a paragraph. Because that's what people are used to reading when they're reading a paperback book. You have a lot of freedom and creativity here. Just find how you want your spacing to be. And as I scroll through, I think everything looks pretty good and pretty much the way I want it to look. This brings me to the next step. And again, this one is optional, personal preference. But we're going to examine the blank pages in this book and determine whether or not we want them to be there. And then whether or not we want to add any additional blank pages to make our book look the way we want it to. For example, I prefer all of my chapters to begin on the right hand page. Let me show you what I mean. So you see how when someone opens the book, they're going to be looking at the right hand page. And that's where I want my new chapter to start. On this example, I had text. So it made that chapters naturally start on the next page. But let's say the text ended on the page before. What I would do is add in an additional blank page here so that my chapter started on the same page every single time. So the reader gets used to seeing the new chapter on the same side of the book when you're reading. This is something really easy to accomplish. We're going to scroll all the way back up. I usually like to leave it in the two page view. When you open the book right away, your title page is going to be the first thing they see and that's going to be on the right hand side of your book. So if you want your chapters to start on that same side, then you want to make sure that every chapter page is on that same side within the Word document. So for example, title of the book is on the right and my copyright is on the left right behind the title page. That's all fine. And now my table of contents would be on the right side because it's on the same side as the title page. But my chapter title would actually be on the back of the table of contents. And so it would start on the left side of the book. And that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in an additional page break. I'm just going to throw it in. You can throw it in on either page that you want. But now you see that my chapter starts on the right side of the page, the same side that the title of my book starts on. And so that's what I'm going to go through. And I'm going to make sure that every chapter starts on the same side of the page. Jump to chapter two. You can see that this one already happened naturally because there was text on the left side and now my chapter is on the right. We jump to chapter three, you can see I need to do the addition again. So I'm going to add in a page break and that's going to give me exactly what I want. If you add a page break at the very top of the paragraph symbol, we're going to jump to chapter four. All right, I need to add another blank page there. And then chapter five, we do it one more time. And now when we come to the back matter, uh, this is again personal preference. So it looks like there's already a blank page that worked out and I like my back matter to usually start on the same side. So ask for a review starting on the right side of the page. That way people are used to reading it, used to seeing something new when they turn to that page. And that's pretty much all you need to do for that step. I just like to make sure there's consistency when my reader is working their way through my book. Just another added level of professionalism and makes your book stand apart when your reader is getting it off Amazon, pulling it off the shelf. Um, just makes for a really good reading experience. One of the last steps that we do as part of the paperback formatting is we're going to insert page numbers. I want to show you how we do this. So there's a couple ways. One of the simplest ways is we're going to go to insert and we're going to choose page numbers. I usually do bottom of the page. That's just how I like my books to feel. And I usually actually do it in the center of the page. One thing I do always do is I make sure that you see how there's options up on the top ribbon is I choose a different first page. And that's because I actually want my title page to not have a number on it. So if you click that option, you'll see that that first title page number goes away. And now the rest of my text has exactly the numbers that I want. Now there are additional ways that you can do it. You can use section breaks. 
to make sure that everything before your table of contents uses one set of numbers, such as like Roman numerals, and then the rest of your text uses normal numbers like that, and that it can start at one. This is more of an advanced feature. If you want me to show you how to do that, I'll make a separate video just so you have that option. So let me go ahead and close the header and footer. And now you can see that our entire book has all the numbers that it needs. The step after that is we want those numbers to show up in our table of contents. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna jump over to the references tab, make sure my cursor is in the table of contents itself, and we're actually gonna insert an entirely new table. You can do whatever kind you want. You can use the automatic ones if you wanna use those features. I usually always use a custom one because I don't like to have the tab leader, so I'm gonna leave these off. But I do want to show my page numbers. I do want them aligned to the right. And that's pretty much all I need to do. I can go ahead and use the simple format again. That's what I used for the ebook version. This is your preference. Hit OK. And there we go. You can see that the page numbers are in our table and they're aligned to the right. Now, I don't want these to be bold necessarily. So I'm just going to do a little formatting on this. And I think that looks good. Let me turn off the show and hide and just see what that looks like. Again, that looks like a really good table of contents. You can see that some of my chapter titles are really long and they kind of run all the way into where the page number is. So that's something we can change really easy. I'm gonna hit the show hide button again and I'm actually gonna go and put my cursor right after that too. And I'm gonna hold down shift and hit enter. And you see that's gonna throw half of the line, half of the chapter title right onto the second line. So it just looks a little bit cleaner when people are scanning through the table of contents. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this additional reading. And there you go, you can see that the number for that chapter aligns with that second line of text. So it just looked really clean. And now there's no like huge sentences running across the entire table of contents. After this, I usually like to go and scroll through my book one more time just to see if I catch any weird formatting issues or text issues. And as you can see, it's a pretty clean product. Let me zoom out all the way so I can see a bunch of pages at once. It looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a PDF. That's the file type that we're going to upload to Amazon when it's time to publish. So I'm going to go ahead and do the PDF. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and then in my folder. I'm just going to leave it the same name, but I'm going to choose PDF File Type and hit Save. And that's going to give me a printable version of everything that we did. And it pops right up. So let me make that full screen so you can see it. Zoom out a little bit. And now in the PDF, you can kind of see the offset a little bit more dramatically. Some of the text pages are a little bit more to the right or a little bit more to the left. And that's again because of whether or not it's printed on the right or left side of the page. And one thing to know is the bigger your book, the bigger the margins are going to be in the side of the book because there's more pages that need to be held on to that spine. So again, I'm going to link in the description to the templates that Amazon provides. And I believe they also have a calculator that will tell you, you know, if your book is past a certain point in pages, it's going to need a different sizing of margins and so on. So I'll make sure all that's linked in the description so you don't have to worry about that. But as we scroll through, you can see that it already looks like a really good paperback book. I'd be excited to get this and read through it. There you have it. These are pretty much the basic steps you need in order to turn your Word document into an ebook file and your ebook file into a print ready PDF. It's really easy to do as long as you follow the steps that I've included. There's a checklist again in the downloadable worksheet for module seven. So go ahead and follow that along and you'll have a finished product like this. You can see we did it in about half an hour, a little less than that. When you're doing it your first time, and of course you're going to have a bigger book than just 40 pages, it's going to take you a little time. So make sure you just block off maybe an hour or two to go through it and just learn the process, learn how you want things to look. And it's going to save you a lot of money and time in the long run. I know formatters can charge as much as a dollar to a page. So if you have a normal size book, which is about 150 to 200 pages, that could cost you anywhere from three to $400 just to do what we did in about half an hour. And again, it might take you a little bit longer the first time or two that you do it, but over time you're gonna learn how you want things to be and it's gonna become a much quicker process. All right, so thank you again for watching and I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next lesson.